Hey guys, how are we doing? So we are watching another Nux Taku video. Been a while, but do you remember when we watched all the Naruto arcs on his descriptions? Well, he's done it all Naruto Shippuden arcs. And that first one was good, so I'm sure this one's going to be just as good, if not better. So, let's just g -g 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 get into this. Don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and we are watching all Naruto Shippuden arcs, honest anime descriptions from Nux. Alright ladies and gents, welcome to the long-awaited sequel to my honest descriptions on the Naruto arcs. Welcome Yay. to Naruto Shippuden. So, I took a lot of your suggestions. I shouldn't talk about what the arc is actually about before I honestly tell you a proper <coughs> description. So, I have taken that to heart like I do with all of your comments, of course. And here oh you go, an honest description of every Naruto Shippuden arc up till the war. Because I can literally do an entire video on the war. Honey, and I plan to has... if you guys like this. We're gonna watch that so, one? The first arc in Shippuden is the Kaze Kage rescue arc. After three years of training that taught Naruto, Jack, aside from how to throw a bigger shuriken, which, like every other shuriken attack, doesn't do crap, Naruto has returned. Only to show his epic maturity oh and get his ass kicked by every God. ninja that kicked his ass in the past. Yes. Only to receive information that best girl Gara was captured best by someone girl. weaker than him, but was successful anyway since this was the first time he was shown in battle and therefore has the ability known as Beginner's Rook. Because even when he was revived in the final war and his body was indestructible, he was easily defeated by random Joni. Needless to say, Team Naruto had to save him. And they did. Being the first and last time Sakura did something semi-useful. <laughs> yeah, she's so good and then they just got rid of her. Old lady who she hindered more than helped. But at last, their attacks were successful. And their result was ultimately Sasori committing suicide at the end of the battle. Revealing Sakura's true futility even then. During this time, the rest of Team Naruto was chasing the Gara capturer. Where Naruto did absolutely nothing. And old geezer Kakashi was the dude that landed a blow. With a jutsu that can only be learned under certain conditions. However, since Kakashi has the power of main character, he was able to keep running on without those conditions. Were built. <laughs> enough, however, they managed to reclaim Gara's corpse, and they also just happened to have a jutsu that can bring the dead back to life handy. And somehow he's stronger now, despite not having the shukaku. Yeah, he doesn't have the tail later, piece. This was the beginning of the end of continuity. You're probably wondering why I didn't talk about Team Guy this yeah, entire the time. Well, the entire time they were in the middle of fighting the biggest ass pull jutsu of an entire arc full of ass pull jutsus. Needless to say, this jutsu was never used despite the capturer not getting defeated. Yep. The next arc is the Tenchi Bridge Rion They Rion saw Arc. Sasuke are amazing. Overusing his eyeball. So, Team Naruto has to reassemble with two new members. Their awesome new Captain Yamato who can use the first Okage's wood style, wood style but apparently sucks at it because despite it being one of the most powerful jutsu styles as revealed by everyone in the war, yep. arc, even to the point of regenerating limbs, an ability that they never offer to the Raikage because it just isn't worth wasting chakra on old people. This dude is so awesome, in fact, that we learn a lot about him. However, take whatever you can get from him from this arc, because after the bridge recon arc, warning, he doesn't do shit. Does to the point where you never even see him anymore. Whether he's just wandering around in the pain arc or getting captured before the war starts, he's just all types of badass. Also, meet the newest member, White Supremacist Sai, a character that comes off as such a beast. You won't even notice when he ends up as useless as Sakura for the entire series. During that awesome mission, we learned that Kabuto was spying from Orochimaru to tell Sasuke but was really spying on Sasori to tell Orochimaru. Holy shit, My that changes everything. God. <laughs> because an epic fight breaks out between Naruto and Orochimaru <laughs> right after the longest still shot stare down in anime history, <laughs> where Naruto, in four tails mode, is so OP, he wrecks his enemy to an insane extent. Yes. Because of Naruto's other special ability. Beginner's Rook. <laughs> As I mentioned before, this is the first time he's using this power and therefore is really strong. Yes. Either that or Orochimaru is literally the weakest villain of all time because Orochimaru full tails cloak using Karama Chakra Really, then they're shite against some of those reanimated corpses. Not to mention Eight Tails mode getting wrecked by pain. In any case, yes. Team Naruto finally has the chance to head to find Sasuke, and they actually do. Yes. And when they asked him, Yo, Sasuke, you want to come home? <laughs> he replies, No. Nah. So Naruto is forced to answer. Okay. On to the next arc. That was the anti Literally our the last arc. The Akatsuki Suppression Arc. One of the only two good arcs of the series. Surprise doesn't focus on Naruto or Sasuke. My Much God. like most shonen series where the high points are without the protagonists. See the first half attack on Titan Season 2, the 1000 year ago Bleach Arc, following Kisuke, the Hunter Hunter York New City Arc. In any case, follow Team Asuma and watch them lose Asuma. Yeah, man. Second of two deaths so far in the series that and both have the last name Sarutobi. Bad mad. vibes. And as his breath <laughs> leaves his body, he mutters some inconsequential 
bullcrap about the king that literally means absolutely nothing before Shikamaru gathers his team and badass Kakashi to fight the zombie duo once again. And they are for one bad of the three best fights of the series, where Kakashi is willing to risk his life not to use Kamui, one of the most overpowered jutsus ever that could have sucked up the entire Kakazu in literally the blink of an eye. However, it's all according to Shikamaru's genius plan. That's so wild, it's awesome. Also, it's pretty impossible that a sword swinging that speed can be hit directly by a syringe, squirting blood, and even if it it's is, so I'd never wild. Seen again, that blood would be gone, especially on a straight blade. But nevertheless, despite all their genius planning, Kakazu was demolished by Naruto's new jutsu. Yes. When I say Naruto's new jutsu, I'm obviously sarcastic because he learns wrestling on power-ups for the rest of the series. This attack is also barely useful. <laughs> That's all it is, isn't it? Razin Shuriken. Beginner's rock. Making a first jutsu used a thousand times stronger than the future ones. Amazing. And guess what? Out of these two guys, the one who we see again next is the one that died, not the one that's immortal. Oh, and minor plot hole? How the hell is he immortal? Another minor plot hole? Why didn't Orochimaru want him? Oh, you think yeah. it's the eyes? Very fun. The next arc is the Team Taka Saga. So, part one of the Team Taka Saga. Orochimaru is known as the most clever and cunning ninja of all time. And he does an incredible Orochimaru's job eyes and plus. <laughs> strong enough to kill him. Instead of just plucking out his eyeballs like everyone else does for like the latter half of the series. And then proceed to take Ivan's immortal body. I wanted part you to two test of the Team my, uh... Taka Saga. Before Sasuke leaves Orochimaru's uh. base, he must first gather a team of powerful ninja, each with crazy, unexplained abilities. Not that they actually accomplish anything at all for the of the series, but at least they keep him company. Especially Kari. Especially yeah. he gets bored of Sakura. Not that you can completely blame the guy. I mean, Sakura is pretty boring. The entire fan base has been saying that for the last 15 years. <laughs> so true. Takasaga. Deidara versus Sasuke. An epic battle. Where ah, I'm it's an explosion. The entire time. Fart. No <laughs> Deidara's ability is basically chewing up white gum like stuff and having it transform into creatures that blows up. Blue. However, there is something hidden somewhere in this recipe that somehow makes it Earth style so lightning style can defuse these bombs. Note, in the anime this was considered considered Sasuke's strength, not luck. Like many of Naruto's stalemate battles, this fight resulted in the two dudes staring at each other manly-like. Both Very manly. Both the strength to throw a kunai at each other, which would have dealt the finishing blow. This is where Deidara reveals his ultimate technique that manages to break the world's logic because it somehow doesn't use chakra. On the flip side, if it did use chakra, he should have made one little bug bomb, and that would have been it. But instead, he activated plot hole no jutsu, an incredibly powerful bomb that he should have totally used when he was revived for the final war. Isn't uh, it especially as because at that point, he would just be able to regenerate and do it again in infinite amount of times, being that it takes no chakra. Yeah. At this, the collective fan base was like, yes, finally, Sasuke, the prick of the series, is going to die, yeah! Um, I mean, uh, oh no, what's Sasuke, our protagonist with protagonist, not armor ability, is going to do to escape? Well, remember how I said he had no chakra left to the extent that he couldn't lift his arm to throw a kunai? Well, he manages to do the impossible and use an incredibly chakra-draining summoning jutsu, put a genjutsu on that summoned creature, then managed to unsummon it in the blink of an eye. Let me know in the comments if this victory was due to skill, luck, <laughs> or just inconsiderate plot armor. Remember, the skill, though, was a Fucking uh, retard. Part four, the Team Taka Saga. Itachi versus Sasuke. A battle that we waited for this entire series only to see the one-sided slaughter that showed how awesome Itachi is. Yes, absolutely freaking to Sasuke to badass. Sasuke strong. Yes, and Sasuke still somehow giving credit for this victory. And here is when yeah. the nickname for Sasuke was born. The edgy prick lord of ass poles. All that aside, Mega Itachi reveal at this point was the best plot twist in the series and one of the best character plot twists in anime, showing yes, Sasuke absolutely. how his brother truly loved him and was fighting amazing. for peace to protect the village that he cared so much about. So now Sasuke Sasuke's mind was finally made up to honor his brother by destroying that village. Yes. Now, I have no fucking clue how he got to that conclusion either. They just needed something to happen to push the it's story like, forward. Like, you know what? Fine. Fuck him. I'm gonna kill him. everyone so loved for the last 500 episodes. Part 5 of the Team Taka Saga. Team Taka vs. Killer B. Even though it was over 500 Killer episodes into the story, that was the perfect time to introduce a new fan favorite character who was so awesome he was able to fight off the full brunt of Team Taka, including a newly powered up Sasuke. Yes. Which, by default, by the way, technically makes him way more powerful than Deidara and Orochimaru due to his masterful ability Beginners uh, Because he gets his ass kicked by Kisame, who gets his ass kicked by Guy, not even fighting at full power. What I'm trying to say is it's a shame that he did not accomplish a single shred of anything throughout the entire series, if you think about it. Aside from giving Naruto the most half-assed tail beast training in history that any tour guide could have done, being that he basically showed Naruto a good spot to train in, and then sort of disappeared for the rest of the war, in any case, to further stress this guy's awesomeness, he managed to fool Sasuke, a master of ocular jutsu, yes. as well as his entire team with a substitution jutsu. Yeah. That's the jutsu that even 
Sakura was able to use when she was a Genin, which also inevitably caused the reveal that the Akatsuki don't actually need the full tail beast, only a minuscule percent of its chakra just for the sake of the ultimate ass pull of getting the bad guys the power without needing to kill Naruto. Uh, can I also mention that this point wastes the entire Sora filler arc? Okay, thanks. Just thought I'd throw that out there. The next arc is yes. Jiraiya the Gallant. It's a short well, yeah, episode arc taking place in Jiraiya's past from... and his interaction with Little Pain, where not only did he train his future killer and the future killer of many, but after all that, he decided to leave him in enemy territory to fend for himself instead of bringing him back to the Leaf Village, which could have uh, likely doubled their fighting Helped force and saved lot. many lives. <laughs> this ultimate arc also reveals that Naruto, and by extension the series, is named after ramen. Next is Kakashi's tale in the Third Great Ninja War, another short flashback arc in the past of Kakashi, proving to us yet again that the only solid arcs in this series take place without either of the two main characters. This was good. Next is the fan favorite Invasion of Pain arc. Pain so, Jiraiya went to fight Pain, proving that without a shadow of a doubt he's the most powerful living Leaf Ninja, and that in the past when he and Tsunade simultaneously fought Orochimaru made no fucking sense. Because <laughs> they should have absolutely Kakashi's annihilated him. So powerful in fact that he was able to decimate three of the six Pains and get into a Toad in a situation that he was able to escape. But being yep. the dumbass, I mean, a uh, badass that he is, he was willing to go back out to sacrifice himself to possibly gather some information of value, which let's be honest, he really didn't do. However, the information well, he did get, he welded onto the back of a Toad with his final go. of strength <laughs> and the most convoluted code in history of mankind that proved him to be a genius and the people that figured it out to be lucky as fuck. Not that there's any reason why he couldn't just give this information in their native tongue because there's no one that he doesn't want to get a hold of this information anyway. Anyway, after the saddest death of the series where very, died, very he somehow sad. didn't even leave a sample of his DNA anywhere on the planet for Kabuto to revive him, even though he's literally a walking, stalking ball of hair. This is when Pain decided to attack the Leaf Village to capture Naruto, who fortunately was not there but was training in Toad World. Unlucky for Pain, oh, yes. he decided to attack now, not anywhere between five years ago and one week earlier, where he would have actually been victorious. Naruto's even got time to perfect his plot armor no jutsu plot before the armor, battle. No in any case, jutsu, the invasion of Pain was a one-sided slaughter, killing yep. tons of important Leaf Ninjas. So many, in fact, that everyone knew they couldn't be dead because, you know, the rule that you can't kill more than one main support character at a time. But then Naruto came, and after getting his ass whooped by Pain for three hours straight in one of the greatest animated, high-budget, quality oh fights of all time. <laughs> so messed up. <laughs> oh my god. What what went wrong with that seriously? And I'll give you that Rasengan was super helpful because a kunai would have sufficed. The result of it all, Naruto met Master Pain, and instead of Pain's really powerful right hand Conan easily taking out the weakened Naruto, the plot decided to pull a fairy tale, resulting in Pain becoming a good guy. Yes. For his last few minutes and sacrificing himself to bring back everyone he's killed from the dead. An ass pull no death revival jutsu the second, causing Naruto to be looked at as the hero, taking away that one relatable feature he still had. Here begins the unanimously decided downward spiral of Shippuden. Uh, just asking, where was Danzo in this arc? Oh, speaking of Danzo, <laughs> the Five Kage Summit arc is next, where occasionally the Lots five major world leaders talk to each are. other instead of spill pointless blood, being that every war thus far winds it down to, let's fight for the sake of fighting, cause screw peace! Not that that's a flow of the series, because that's literally what happened in our world as well, so okay. But now everyone is in a crappy situation together, so it's time to become friends with the main bad guy, Toby. Basically, accidentally, instead of destroying the world, he pulled a Lelouch and unified it. And on Danzo's way to the summit, he gets attacked by random crap ninjas that are so crappy we don't even hear a backstory from them and that's bad because we like literally get backstories for the random henchmen in filler arcs but in any case Danzo decides to take care of them himself instead of using his two extremely powerful bodyguard dudes take care of their job Danzo disposes of them easily with the genjutsu of Shisui's Sharingan an ability so powerful it's the only known jutsu that's literally unblockable the clincher is however yeah. that this jutsu can only, can only be used it so many times 10 years you. yeah you heard me and he literally used history's it. worst battle decision ever that not only cost him his battle with Sasuke for no purpose, but could have actually had the Ninja Alliance win the war in a breeze. Yes. Sasuke, speaking of the <laughs> devil, was still in his brooding revenge mode and decided it would be fun to kill Danzo. Literally the only character in the series I wanted dead more than Sasuke, so I was good with it. Yeah, so Sasuke that as well. and a gathered group of allies infiltrated the summit to destroy it. This is the first and last time any of Sasuke's team Takalaki's battled in the series, and they were unsuccessful to boot. Sasuke, on the other hand, was overpowered AF because despite 
despite zero training between him and his allies getting thrashed by Killer B, he was now single-handedly thrashing a bunch of ninja, many undisputedly stronger than B himself, which even caused the Raikage to lose his arm in the stupidest fashion ever just because he wanted to bitch slap Sasuke knowing that it wouldn't accomplish anything. Oh, yeah. The second stupidest arm loss in anime, and credit to that, goes to Toby. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this video was longer than expected, but there's just so much stuff I need to be honest about about Naruto, it's crazy. So, I do hope for there to be a third video being the honest descriptions on the Naruto's war arc. So, Hell please yes. subscribe so you know when that comes out. This series does not end there because I would love to do on One Piece and Fairy Tale and Bleach, and there's so much. Oh, it'd be class stuff to see stuff like that. Anime. So, I'd appreciate a like and I'd appreciate a share and subscribe. Also, finally, last subscribe. but not least, huge, major, mega thanks to Overpowered Goron for editing this video. He came at a time where, frankly, I didn't have the manpower to look through the entire Shippuden for all of these clips, and I don't think you even realize the work extent that goes into something of this nature. So if you could please show him some love in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, I will link his channel in the description. Feel free to check him out and tell him I sent you. Of course, if any of you want to edit one of my videos, feel free to contact me on Discord or just email me, nuxtaku at gmail.com. If any of y'all want to hang with me, link to Discord that I hang in in the description with me and some other YouTubers. If you also want to check out my live stream on Anime Uproar's channel with Misty Krenexia about which long-running anime you should watch, link to that in the description as well. And yes, I'm working on Boruto Abridged Episode 2. James, that is good. Down, it's so people. good. Okay, good. In any case, have yourself the most wonderful evening. I'll down. see y'all next time. Later, dudes. That was brilliant. I love it. So funny. That's so great. And yes, I will be doing the um, the war arc, but then he's done one as well for the ending climax, <laughs> which I think will be very good. He's so funny. He's, he's great and he knows what he's talking about and um, very, very entertaining indeed. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you're watching and discussing in the future videos. And I'll see you guys. Yes, all of you guys next time.